Hi, Chris Cavus for Naval News, here just outside Washington, D.C. at the Navy League Sea Airspace Exposition. So the first system, uh, my understanding is, it's already passed, the Captus 4 has already passed all its U.S. Navy Correct. Naval Sea Systems Command certification. All the right? requirements are done, it's ready to go, and it just deliver it to the shipbuilder. The next thing that happens is for the ship, when it finally gets uh, in the water, it'll go through uh, IOT and E test and evaluation as a whole crew ship, so it's the, the training and everything else. But the system, as it performs, is, is acceptable, works well. The next step is to make sure that as the crew operates it, they know how to take care of it, operate it to its uh, maximum capability. And that'll happen when the ship goes in the water. So, as everybody knows, one of the big problems with the frigate program is that it's very far behind schedule. There's, construction has barely begun, it's nowhere near launch, it's nowhere near commissioning. It'll be a long time for this, this sonar is, a, is a being operated from the USS Constellation. In the meantime, what, what would you like, what, 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 are there, what, what are the Navy's plans, what would you like to see happen? Very good question, because we as Talas and, and the providers of uh, variable depth sonar, we're anxious for the U.S. Navy to get it in their hands and have operators use it. So what we have proposed to the U.S. Navy, and they are considering right now, is to take the, the versions we have already delivered, the, the first one, and put it on a vessel of opportunity, which we have demonstrated in France, something like an ocean-going workboat and be able to, to actually deploy the, the CAPTAS-4, use it with real operators, and learn how to develop the concept of operations and how to use the system so that when the ship finally hits the water, we're not training the crew on this, we're training the crew on how to manage this whole ship. They already know how to operate this, much like they already know how to operate the radars and everything else. So you're, you're not taking a new system from a training and operational point of view and and testing it for the first time in the water when the ship goes to the water. You have lots of other things to do with the ship to make sure it's all built right and, and managed. Uh, so we're anxious to work with the Navy to get a real captas on a vessel uh, with Navy crews operating it, developing concepts of operation, understanding how to use a variable depth sonar. And as you pointed out earlier, it's been a long time since the U.S. Navy had a variable depth sonar in its inventory. And, and it's just a different way of operating. Very capable, but it, but it requires some thinking about how to, how to use it to its maximum effectiveness. So if this were to fit on, say, a workboat, yes. like a, a standard oil field workboat yes. type ship, which is the sort of thing that the Navy has adapted for unmanned testing, um, would that be possible on a hull like that? And what would the components be? So thank you for asking that question. Yes, uh, it is absolutely possible. In fact, uh, Talas has demonstrated this CAPTAS-4, it's actually much larger than the model here, uh, on a workboat at sea and uh, delivering both it, the winch that handles it, and a command and control uh, mechanism inside of basically a 20-foot uh, ISO container, if you will, where the operators sit, uh, where the information from the CAPTAS comes back, uh, and they can uh, manipulate it uh, and operate it. So if you think about just the underwater detection capability of this system, uh, and being able to train with it and operate it, you don't need the Cray Hall. You just need a boat large enough to handle the, 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 the electronics, the winches, the uh, command and control module, and all that's been done before. And we can show you videos where we took, did it in France and you put it on a workboat, did all this, took it to sea. And it's been some time ago, as you know, this has been in operation for, some, for a while with the, with the French Navy. It's very capable, very modern sonar, but uh, I, you know, we're finally adopting it into the U.S. Navy. Anxious to get it in the water for the U.S. Navy to handle now. I'll bet you are. Talk a little bit about this factory in Pennsylvania. If this is a new facility, Talos built it. How many people work there? What else is being produced in this factory? What else would you like to be producing at the factory? Thank you for that question. Yes, we, we Talos, built a whole new facility. It's uh, actually in a, a subsi wholly owned subsidiary of TDSI called Advanced Acoustic Concepts. So that's, if you're looking for a company name that actually built that facility and put it together, that's Talos, Advanced Acoustic Concepts. We built that facility from scratch. It is a, actually a replica of the facility in France that was producing the, the uh, CAPTAS 4s for the other navies of the world. Um, has a, a, a water tank where we can dip the sonar into it and test it all out, make sure all of the acoustics work well. Uh, the winches get there, we roll out the winch, we uh, test the whole thing before we deliver it to uh, Finn Cantieri. Now, the, um, that facility was purpose-built for this. Uh, it can deliver 
right now, of course, we're building them one by one, but we can go up to two or three at a time. So if the uh, requirement is to build more faster, we're prepared to do that in that facility. Adjacent to that facility is a facility that uh, Advanced Acoustic Concept has had for some time. So you, I think, Chris, you're familiar with the SQS-89 submarine uh, acoustic control system that comes from Lockheed. That's actually manufactured by Advanced Acoustic Concepts in that facility uh, in Lamont Furnace, Pennsylvania. So the entire manufacture of the, uh, if you will, the uh, ASW command and control system is done by Advanced Acoustic Concept. We put it all, run the wiring, put it all together, put it in the cabinets, test the software, and then ship it off to Lockheed Martin, who does their bit, and then delivers it to the all the DDGs in the United States inventory, and will go into the FFG-62. So same, if you will, uh, operating system. Uh, the other thing we're looking forward to in that facility, and perhaps a, uh, building a new facility, is we want to bring a brand new sauna buoy into the United States Navy's uh, uh, inventory. Uh, we call it Sauna Flash. It is uh, an active and passive buoy at the same time. Which is unusual. Which uh, d there is, there doesn't exist another version of that. So now you've got one buoy that does active and passive, has a bit of range. Uh, we want to bring that to the United States so that we can fill out the rest of the U.S. Navy's inventory. The production capacity for sauna buoys in the United States right now is below what the Navy's inventory wants to be. And we're talking the inventories of tens of thousands that the, the, the Navy needs. So the French, we have the Talus, has designed and built this for the French Navy. The U.S. Navy has been to see the sauna flash sauna buoy. They like it. They, it has the capabilities they want. This summer we'll bring that buoy into the U.S. and let the U.S. do its own testing for compatibility because now we have to take it to the P-8 and the MH-60 Romeo. But we would build that in the United States. We'd bring over the production line. We're ready to do that. So as soon as the U.S. Navy is excited about it, we would uh, build a, a uh, cell that actually manufactures it and then, then expand that cell, scale it up to the production capacity that the United States Navy needs. And we're, we're happy to invest in that. We think that's a good market for us. Uh, worldwide, we think we can help the Navy get to the inventory they need, and and on time. So happy to happy to go there. Some great great work, U.S. Americans doing uh, building things that the U.S. Navy needs in Pennsylvania. We love it. All right. Well, thank you, sir. We've been folks. We've been talking with retired U.S. Navy Rear Admiral Tony Langerich. He is now the Vice President for Naval Programs at Tallis Defense and Security. USA. Thank you, sir. Chris, glad to be here. Anytime. Thank you very much for the interview. Take care of yourself.